So you have probably been wondering, and if you haven't been wondering, then you may not have been wondering to the point that you may start wondering the performance between a Ryzen 5 5500, a Ryzen 5 5600, and an i5 12400. Now, people have been beating up on me about the Ryzen 5 5500. I recommended it in a budget build recently that we did, and people were like, you just should go for the Ryzen 5 5600. It's an extra chunk of money, but it doesn't matter. You're just getting so much better value. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I, for starters, I'm going to raise a question to all the people that don't like the Ryzen 5 5500. I'm going to raise the first question, and that is, name me one game that this CPU cannot play. And we can just, okay, I'm wrong. I'll say this CPU is just terrible value. It's bad value. But then I also started looking at the street prices of this CPU and I was blown away by how cheap it is to get a relevant six core 12 threaded CPU in 2022. Now it does go away with PCIe 4.0. It does have half the level three cache that the Ryzen 5 5600 has. But one thing that it does have is a better price, a much better price if we look at the street pricing. 110 US dollars on AliExpress versus 160 on the Ryzen 5 5600. Not only that, if you go with the cheaper motherboard like a B450, then you're not going to even have PCIe 4.0 available on any of those slots. So basically, if you go for the 5600, then you at least want to get a B550 motherboard, take advantage of that PCIe Gen 4, but then you're going to be paying more of a price for that motherboard over the B450. But then at that stage, I want you to stop and I want you to say, Brian, I love Hoopla, because Hoopla is where it's going to go. That's where we're going with this because you start opening up one box, more questions come out. And then that in turn produces another box with another question. Basically what I'm trying to say is 99.9% .9 of single end desktop users do not need PCIe Gen 4. Even if you're a video editor, you'll know for a fact that the problems aren't with the storage, it's with the applications like Adobe Premiere Pro themselves. But Brian, I want my games to load up 0.2 seconds faster than ever. Oh my God, please let my games load up faster. Let's just roll that sponsor spot and then show you the 1080p numbers, both lowest and highest settings. If you want to get yourself a cheap, legit Windows 10 Pro Key license, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $14, when you use that coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows activated right now. Link's in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and pulling up this first title, Valorant, 1080p, lowest settings. We tested this with an RTX 3080, and I also decided to use 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz on all three different setups. We ended up using a B660 from a Zeus with the 12400 for the Intel side and using a B550 Tough Gaming Plus for the AMD side. And what we saw here at 1080p on the lowest settings was 395 on the i5-12400 versus 389 on the Ryzen 5 5600 versus 339 on the 5500. So it did lose a little bit of performance here, but again, I'm gonna be raising that question as we go through those benchmarks. Who can't play this game competitively with 339 FPS? That's where I'm gonna kind of be going with this CPU is that it's plenty enough. And in fact, in the future, it's gonna rely on the game manufacturers to optimize their titles better. But let's keep going. Max settings, we went from 364 FPS on the 12400 leading the race down to 325 average FPS, so the differential as we load up the GPU ever more than we did at low settings starts to minimize the difference between the two. Moving over to Fortnite, epic settings, 1080p. Here was where we saw the 5600 score a slight victory over the 12400 at 162 versus 160 FPS versus 152 on the Ryzen 5 5500. So really nothing here to write home about. And also another thing is too, since we are using that B550, on the 5600, it is taking advantage of PCI Gen 4 with the RTX 3080. So you will gain maybe one or two FPS in that if we were using a B450 on both these AMD CPUs, the differences would be closer together. So stepping things down to the lowest settings, here's where we saw 312 average FPS versus 258. I am doing these tests here at Tilted Towers and it is probably one of the most, I guess, intensive locations on the map to test with because for instance, if you're walking up a hill and all you're seeing is just the ground, you'll probably get much higher FPS 
in different comparisons. But I think this is where we want to test for the worst case scenario, and it's still over 240 average FPS. So competitive gamers with a Ryzen 5 5500 are not going to be having a problem in Fortnite. The move over to Total War DX11 since DX12 beta gave worse results than DX11. We had here at the lowest settings 552 average FPS on the 12400 and then that went down to 434 on the Ryzen 5 5500. The 5600 was performing a little closer to the 12400 getting a sizable step up in FPS but again, back to that number, 434 average FPS. Stepping things up to 1080p ultra settings, 195, then down to 182, and then down to 153 average FPS. 1% 1 and 0.1% lows were fine on all these CPUs, on all the games we've tested so far, and this continued on with Far Cry 6, where we saw here at 1080p lower settings, 158 versus 153 versus 137. And then we step things over to 1080p maximum settings and we got 124. And then that stepped down to 122 versus 111. Going over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 207 average FPS. Then the 5600 scored the victory here at 1080p with 209. And then that went down to 172 with the Ryzen 5 5500. Then going up to the 1080p max settings detail, 184 versus 185 versus 158. And then onto the final title here is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. We tested this with the Vulcan API as opposed to DX11. And here's where we got 209 average FPS versus 205 versus 179, stepping things up to 1080p maximum quality settings, 107 versus 168 versus 148. So what about power consumption when we are gaming? Well, if you are not undervolting, and I do recommend you do undervolt, which we got some more tutorials on the way for, then you do have 42 versus 45 versus 46. So there really is nothing to write home about when it comes to gaming and the direct power draw of these CPUs themselves. And so there's no reason really to choose one over the other here if you're thinking about power consumption out of the box versus the performance too. So with those numbers out of the way, it's now time to get back to a recommendation with these cpus and that is i like all three of them i mean that might be hard for people to be like oh my god brian you've always got to recommend one over the other but this is where i like all three if you've got a lower budget the ryzen 5500 and a b450 is going to be incredible value for money if you've got a bit more on the budget card go with the ryzen 5600 either b450 or b550 options are available if you want to go with DDR4 or DDR5 on the Intel side, then you can go with the 12400 and still get relatively good value. So this is what I like about these three CPUs. There's no hard winner here. It all depends on what your budget is and what you wanna do. Where I feel like the 5600 and also the i5-12400 are a little bit more expensive options, but especially if you wanna say, spend a bit more money on a motherboard now and upgrade in the future and still get more performance now, then you can pay for that and get it. But in terms of just building a cookie cutter build and getting say a Ryzen 5 5500, B450 and an RX 6600 off the used market, you can really put together an amazing system in 2022 for a good price. The good days are back. And this CPU is gonna be, in my opinion, one of those CPUs that's just gonna constantly come up in terms of people who wanna get the absolute best value for money at the mid-range segment. It's gonna be a mid-range workhorse and it's gonna couple perfectly with mid-range GPUs, especially at 1080p or even 1440p. Say for instance, we buy a U6700 XT and we go up to 1440p ultra settings, the differences between the CPUs aren't gonna to be too much and we would have saved money to enable us to get that 6700 XT. So maybe a more relevant comparison with these CPUs would be, okay, let's go get an RX 6600 XT and then test it at 1080p and 1440p with a 5600 versus a 5500 and a 6700 XT. I mean, we could make that video happen as well, but I already know the results. And that is in that one use case scenario at 1440p especially, the Ryzen 5 5500 6700 XT combo 
it's going to come out on top. The last thing to talk about here is the uh, 1% and 0.1% lows. I've been hearing about how terrible the Ryzen 5 5500 is in the comments about 1% and 0.1% lows. I haven't noticed any of that, at least in my testing, and I'm playing multiplayer titles here. I'm playing Valorant, I'm playing Fortnite. I've even played a bit of Apex Legends when I was testing that game in another video that I did with the 5500, and it's a great CPU. You're not gonna have any problems providing you set it up right. So what I'm talking about here is the main thing to do on Ryzen CPUs is get your F clock and your U clock and your MEM clock all at the same uh, 1 to 1, 1 ratio. So we'll have that at 1800 megahertz with 3600 megahertz memory, for example, which is DDR, double data rate, and then that will give you the best experience. So 3600 megahertz, remember to have all those base clocks at 1800 megahertz, and you may have to manually set them in the BIOS, but usually the BIOS should do it with 3600 megahertz out of the box. And if you have that, you'll be getting the best performance, providing you've got two sticks of memory at least, instead of one stick of memory. So once you get that going, Ryzen 5 D500, you're not gonna have any problems gaming. Anyhow guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the 5500. If you wanna test with the 3600, I didn't get one. I, I mean, I've been buying a lot of parts here recently uh, for different videos and projects that I've had to do, but 3600 hasn't come up mainly because at least if I wanna buy it brand new and even off the used market, it costs more than the 5500 currently. And at least when I've checked the Cinebench results and some other results out there, the 3600 isn't as good as the 5500s. So if you're wondering about 3600 or 5500, I'd be going with the 5500 if they're the same price. But of course, when it comes to buying a used deal, always get the best price that you can get and make sure it works. Though with that aside, do let us know in the comments section below what you think of all three of these CPUs that we featured in today's video. I'm on the fence of I like all three of them. They all have a reason to exist, though I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Just like this question of the day here, which comes from Idiot Race. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't read the name. I read the question first. I've always wondered, is the Yes Man fluent in Japanese? I remember years ago you were living in Japan or working. I don't know. But I only started following you when you're in Oz. Uh, so yeah, I did used to live in Japan for quite some time. I do speak Japanese, uh, conversational. I don't read and write well at all. Like I can read um, some kanji. I can read katakana and hiragana. But yeah, mainly my main strength is just talking and having conversation with people, which I can do, which is how I learned Japanese in the first place. Because when it came to studying, because I remember when I first came here, I was like reading books on studying and I'm like, man, I cannot do this. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I guess I'm not much of a person for, for studying. And uh, then I just went out and talked to people and I was like, okay, that, that word's that. Okay, I say that and that. Page. I mean, thank you. I got to thank those people in the past that had a lot of patience to uh, handle all the terrible Japanese they heard in the past. But in the end, it's how I learned things and came to a good spot with that. So hope that answers that question. And with that aside, if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.